moving. Given the following um, graph as a function f of x, we're going to go through all these checklist points here. All right. So um, find all the values where the derivative is greater than zero. That's really asking where is the tangent slope going to be positive. Well, that's going to be in this region right here that will be positive, and then also from this region on out. So that's going to be um, from negative infinity to negative 1. And again, I'm using the um, interval notation. Where is the derivative? I should also say and from 1 to positive infinity. All right. Then uh, when is it going to be negative? Uh, when will the slope be negative and the th uh, derivative is below 0? It'll be from negative 1 to positive 1. It'll be negative as it goes down and then starts to turn around and go 0. When is the derivative equal to 0? That's at x equals plus or minus 1. I can write that. Um, where is the function increasing? That's um, increasing again from negative infinity to negative 1 and from 1 to positive infinity. F is decreasing then the same uh, intervals that the derivative is less than 0. So that's from negative 1 to positive 1. And F has an inflection point where it turns around. An inflection point is here at x equals 0, where the slope it goes from concave up to concave down. So that's at the origin. Then uh, where is uh, the second derivative of the function greater than 0? That's really saying when is it concave up or concave down. So concave up is from 0 to positive infinity, where it is concave up and it's concave down from negative infinity to 0. All right. Um, where is the function of the derivative increasing? That's when the slope is increasing. And you can see down here, this is the area where the slope starts out. It's small, just above 0, and then it increases more steeply. So we know that the second, uh, the derivative is increasing from uh, 1 to infinity. On this side, the slope is decreasing. Actually, the slope should be increasing all the way, um, all over the interval that it is greater than 0. Let's see. Uh, let me make sure that is correct. f prime of x. So that's the derivative. It can be negative and getting bigger. And that is that should be from 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity. It's where it's concave upward. It's increasing. And then it's decreasing where it's concave downwards. Yeah, that's just a clever way of asking the same question they're really saying in g of h. Snag me for a second. So that's from negative infinity to 0. Hope that makes sense. Again, they're saying, when is the derivative decreasing? When is the slope getting less and less and less? And if you think about it, the slope is steep here, but getting less and it's getting less and it's getting less and it's getting less all the way into 0. But it's still getting less and less and less and less. It's only right here at 0 that it turns around. That's why it begins at 0 for the increasing part. It's increasing after that. And it's 0 when it stops decreasing. So I stand by those answers. f has a local maximum at x equals negative 1 and at positive 1, plus or minus, uh, whoops. Local maximum is at negative 1. I'm not reading maximum. Local minimum is at x equals positive 1. All right, that's that. OK, on to the last page here. Um, we are asked to find the derivative, f prime of x, of this function right here, 2 over x plus 4, using the definition um, from the last section in the book. That's the one that has h in the bottom, um, as we used it. So I will write the limit as h approaches 0 of then our function 2 over, and then we use a plus h. That's that little bit extra h from some position point a plus 4 and then minus 
the function 2 over x plus 4, and then that's all over h, okay? So I, I want to evaluate this limit, and I can't just plug in 0 because I've got 0 in the denominator, so I will clean it up by doing the, the math at the top. So I'm just going to multiply across and find a common denominator, multiply back, and multiply up there, and so that will equal the limit as h approaches 0 of, and then the numerator here is 2 times x plus 4 minus 2 times and then a plus h and then plus 4 and then that's all over the common denominator x plus 4 and a plus h plus 4 and then that's all over h. Alright, well once you do that and you distribute in 2x and then 8 and then you get uh, that should be a a plus 4 sorry a plus 4 you get 2a plus 8 and then you get negative 2a negative 2h and then negative 8 so you'll see you get the 2a to cancel with the negative 2a you get the 2 times 4 8 to cancel with the negative 8 and what you're left with is negative 2 times h. So writing it again, the limit is h approaches 0 of then negative 2h over that common denominator a plus 4 and then when I tidy this up it is a plus 4 and then a plus h plus 4 uh, that denominator then all over h. Well, the h's cancel, and I get then the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 over a plus 4 times a plus h plus 4. Well, as h goes to 0, I no longer have the problem with division by 0, so I can just let h go to 0. So that goes to 0, and I wind up with the limit being negative 2 over a plus 4 times a plus 4 because that h just disappears and so then final final answer is negative 2 over a plus 4 squared alright well now x here is negative 3 so if I plug in negative 3 the slope m is going to be negative 2 over negative 3 plus 4 squared and that's equal to negative 2 over 1 squared, which equals negative 2. So that's the slope, and I want the equation in slope-intercept form for that tangent line. So I can write it in point-slope form, or y equals mx plus b form, where I just sub in the point. That's negative 3 for x, that's a negative 2 for the slope, um, when I plug in negative 3 and evaluate it, that's 2 over, again, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 2 over 1 is 2 for the y, right? We're really talking about the point that's negative 3 comma 2. I don't know if that's totally obvious to you, but it hopefully is when you plug it in and evaluate it. And then it's the b that I don't know. So 2 equals positive 6 plus b. So subtract 6 and b equals negative 4. All right. So then my final final equation is y equals negative 2x minus 4. All right. Then um, on to the last problem here. Uh, I say don't make this harder uh, than it should be. It's really quite straightforward. Again if you've got some function and at some point when x is 2 um, we're trying to find the slope uh, or the equation of that tangent line, but they're telling us that at this function, um, at the derivative, we know that the slope is 5. So we know that m here is 5. So, um, and the point is um, at 2 is 3. So this is at 2 comma 3. So again, just like I did up here, I just have y equals mx plus b, and I know 3 is equal to 5 times 2 plus b, 3 equals 10 then, plus b, so b is negative 7. And then I can write a final answer, y equals 5x minus 7. Okay, that's the end of it. Um, 
Good luck. We'll have a chance to talk about some of this right before the test tomorrow. Good luck.